Long before COVID-19 hit, Singapore's retail sales had already been in negative territory. But as the pandemic progressed, the rise of e-commerce took on a new momentum. When we first started in Lazada in 2012, you know, we could actually define, uh, these are the type of customers who buy online. And, and we can actually stereotype who those customers were. But nowadays, you cannot say, these are the type of people who buy online and, and, and these are not the type of people who buy online. So COVID-19 really unlocked that you know, feeling of you know, e-commerce and digital economy is really just part of the overall day-to-day -day life. Singapore's online retail sales have grown over 150% from a year ago. Buyers flocked online to buy food staples, fitness equipment and electronics for play or work from home. During the circuit breaker, Lazada's grocery platform, Redmart, saw an over 50% rise in overall buyers. The number of brands, sellers and suppliers on its online shopping platform also spiked in the past months, driving higher traffic on the Lazada app. In the very beginning, it was more about, I would come to Lazada, search for things that I need, and then uh, make the checkout. But how it evolved over time was, we see much more browsing and engaging behaviors. So, you know, customers engaging on um, live streaming. You know, customers are, you know, looking, uh, much, looking for much more products uh, as they visit Lazada. As people spent more time at home, live streaming helped boost Lazada's Southeast Asia sales by over 40% in April. To level up this strategy of combining shopping and entertainment, Lazada partnered with MediaCorp to engage shoppers through radio and TV for its National Day Mega Sale campaign. This time, uh, the National Day Parade uh, uh, moved to a digital by having this uh, uh, shopping format together with uh, celebrities, uh, key opinion leaders, and DJs and MCs. It's an opportunity for the brands to also engage some of these uh, opinion leaders in further strengthening their brand and be part of this excitement. For electronics retailer Audio House, Ramping up online engagement remains a key priority, even as sales at its showroom begin to normalize during phase two of Singapore's reopening. People do come out to the store to view some of the appliances. However, when the pandemic hit, right, it means that they have to buy everything online without even viewing the items. Audio House deployed staff to do Facebook Live sessions and digital messaging during the circuit breaker. This entailed fast-track training in presenting product features via web, but it eventually paid off. We saw a lot of not just low-value items, but high-value items, you know, like 82-inch TVs, the expensive fridges. They were able to purchase it after knowing the specs online. Consumers today are buying across the different channels, and actually their purchasing decision is highly varying and can start online and then they may end up buying a product offline or vice versa. To survive, EY says retailers need to adopt a sound multi-channel strategy, consistent online engagement, relevant product mix, focus on online marketing and proactively invest in back-end operations. Consumer expectations are basically about being able to quickly find and buy the product that they want and making sure that they're able to get it at the right price and at the right time. Fashion retail platform Zalora says data analytics can also help retailers better understand consumer buying patterns. We can't control the environment. Therefore, what we can control is making sure that we are able to react very, very fast. From a brand uh, perspective, it's going to be very important to have agile supply chains and agile manufacturing networks. In the last quarter alone, Zalora saw nearly 2 million downloads of its app. Amid rising demand, it was quick to add essentials like masks and sanitizers in its product offerings. As sales of occasion wear took a big hit, categories like sports, health, personal care, beauty and kids have been Zalora's biggest sellers. 
these categories are, are growing anywhere from 70% to even triple digit growth. The share of new customers in the revenue has also increased depending upon the market, uh, you know, anywhere from 7% to 15%. So definitely we see a momentum towards new customers and acquisition. As the COVID-19 crisis makes health and environment important issues for consumers, Zalora also sees growing interest for pre-loved items on its platform. It's less than, you know, 1% of the total SKUs available on our platform. But, you know, the ratio of sales to SKUs is actually healthier for this, uh, showing that the consumer is, is willing to go after products of this nature. In the past months, both Zalora and Lazada have been helping small businesses build their web presence. While firms get support in content creation, marketing and training, Lazada says there's no shortcut to winning in online retailing. It's kind of like when you open up a shop offline, it takes a bit of time to you know, get people to get to know you. We ran the data of what happened in the last few months and one of the findings that we have is those brands and retailers who joined much earlier on, uh, much before uh, the COVID-19, in the multiple years already in e-commerce, benefited the most. But even though e-commerce is now a core pillar for retailers, experts say physical stores still play a role and will evolve from just being a traditional sales channel. The physical uh, interaction with the products, with the overall store experience, is something that consumers will still want to have. The store owners to make sure that their overall offering in the store nicely complement what they would sell online. The consumers will expect a lot more use of technology even in the stores. Seeing a customer navigating that entire journey and being able to recognize the same customer as they walk through channels is going to be very important uh, for, for the retail industry of the future.